Mm. Hey, fellas. Welcome to another exciting episode here at Prime Model Works headquarters. I'm back. Yay. <laughs> I've been busy doing lots of stuff around the house. I built a couple models since you last saw me. But uh, ooh, the sound might be a little different because I have... Uh, I put in a new laminate floor. Did that uh, a week or so ago, a couple weeks ago, maybe. Uh, yeah, I got rid of that nasty carpet. No more carpet monster for me. And it's funny when I pulled up the old, the old carpet and little bits and pieces that I'd lost throughout the years started showing up again. <laughs> oh, anyway, I'm taking another sip of my coffee. I had somebody uh, comment on one of my videos recently about uh, me sipping coffee and waving how I looked really stupid and it was really, I was really dumb for sipping my coffee. It was at the beginning of my video and that uh, I looked really dumb, stupid waving or something. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, lighten up Francis. Anyway, I'm back. Um, I'm about ready to finish up a, my, my last commitment on uh, com some commissions that I, I committed to. Sounds kind of weird. Committed. I don't I'm about ready. I'm, I'm about done with uh, some commission work that, that I had committed myself to. And uh, I'm not going to take any more commissions for the foreseeable future. I'm just, I'm getting tired of it. So I'm trying to get out of it. <clears throat> so I decided to treat myself with uh, some easy to build Tamiya kits. So I bought, dun, dun, dun. I bought two more Tamiya F14s. Um bought another F4 Phantom kit so I can build this one on video as some people requested. And then uh, I bought an F16. Uh, not the easiest kit to build. Uh, not the easiest to me a kit to build, but it's a pretty good kit nonetheless. So um, th this is going to be the subject of this video. So and I'm sure I'll have the title as a 148 to me F16. Anyway, but uh, yes, I am building this baby, and there we are. But anyway, as with a lot of my videos, I um, <clears throat> I don't concentrate so much on the building part, uh, just because there's a lot of videos out there that show how to build it. And this kit's pretty easy to build, so um, other than a few issues, which I point out in the video, and I like to show you some tips and tricks. So, and I also like to talk a lot with my hands. So, <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna quit jabbing. I'm not very awake, so yeah, let's get on with the video. All right, now I know I've covered this in a previous um, video, but we'll go over it again. Now this kit supplies you with two canopies. You've got a, tel a tinted one and a regular one, but uh, something you don't typically see in 148 scale, but you see a lot of in 30 second scale, there's a seam line running right along the top of the canopy and it needs to be sanded out. Uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but once you get used to doing it, it's not that big of a deal. So how I like to do this, we'll go ahead and cut this out. I think I'm going to use, I started polishing this, this one out, and uh, I think I'm going to use a tinted one. But we'll go ahead and cut this out, and we'll use this as a demonstration piece. So I'm going to take a sharp X-Acto blade, and this has a really prominent seam running right along there. It's really sticking out. And so I'm going to take my X-Acto blade and I'm just going to scrape away that part that's sticking up, that part of the seam that's really sticking up there. Just so I have less sanding to do. So if I can scrape it away, I'm going to scrape it away. And it's also good, especially when because the seam doesn't stop just at the, the, the canopy part. It goes across the frame. So instead of, instead of sanding all this, I'm going to use my X-Acto knife to get in there and scrape away that seam line that's going to be running right along where I paint. Let's snip this off. And I'm going to try not to sand this part as much, if at all, if I can help it. I try to get away with just using my X-Acto blade to scrape away that seam right there. And then down here as well. Right there. Okay, 
So I'm just gonna continue scraping away this. This also runs along, there's a seam along the back part too, which I don't quite understand, but it is what it is and uh, we'll take care of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and scrape this away and then we'll come back and we'll hit it with some uh, sanding sticks of various types and I'll show you what different types that I use, okay? All right, so now that I've got that all scraped away, now I'm gonna start sanding on it and I don't wanna use anything really coarse. I have these sanding sticks right here, which, um, you know, sometimes I use, but I can also use some of these micro mesh sanding sticks. They come in like a coarse, medium, a fine, and a super fine. Those are really good. These are kind of stiff though. Uh, I've also got some of these micro mesh sanding pads, which are pretty good. And they go all the way from 3,200 to 12,000 grit. Um, those are pretty good. But I'm just going to make quick work of this. And there's something to be said. I've done this on a couple of my planes. Now, from my understanding, when uh, these planes are in use, the canopies get beat up and get scratched and look pretty horrible from what I understand. And I am going to weather this plane. So, you know, it could be, uh, if you want to do this on your model, you may not polish out all the, all the, uh, the scratches and stuff, and you might actually um, want to kind of dull it down a bit, maybe. But we're just going to polish this for, for the sake of it. Now, I've got these Infini sanding sponges. These are really nice. They're really soft. And I'm going to start off with 800. You can see I've taped taped off where the, uh, the frame, canopy frame is, and that's going to uh, help alleviate if, if I go over. It's going to keep me from sanding away that... Uh, the, the demarcation line where the frame starts. So I'm just gonna take my 800 grit and now I'm gonna start sanding out the rest of that seam. What I like about these sanding sticks uh, is, or these sanding sponges, is they really remove material fast. It makes everything a lot easier, a lot quicker. So now what I'm doing is I'm just making sure that this canopy I'm not pressing real hard. I'm just making sure that uh, the, the, the canopy is all nice and contoured the way it's supposed to be. Because with that seam line, it kind of almost went down and then up into a point where that seam line that we scraped away was. So I want to make sure everything's nice, nice and contoured. I'm going to go right up to that tape, this 800 grit. Okay, looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna come in with a thousand grit. You can even add a little bit of water here. Make sure I get the other, my thousand grit. So I'm just wet sanding it. Again, I'm not pressing very hard at all. All right. Check and make sure I don't have a ridge. Everything looks pretty good. Looks pretty uniform. All right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this rubbing compound that I got at Walmart, use for a uh, your car, and I'm just gonna take some, get it on my finger, put it on here, and now I'm gonna start polishing away and smoothing everything out. All right? I've got a cheap Dremel tool here, one I got at Walmart. Now when you use this on clear parts, you wanna make sure that you use the low speed setting, because if it goes too, if you get it too high, and you stay on a spot too long, it's gonna burn through the plastic and melt the plastic. So basically, I've got my little polishing wheel here, and I'm just gonna go over and start polishing out. Oh, be careful of that too. <laughs> polishing out my canopy with this uh, rubbing compound. Now I wanna get it to where it's nice and clear, 
but it's not gonna get so clear with this that it's gonna be like a super, super clear finish. I'm gonna have to come back with some, uh, some polishing compound and then a plastic polish with the Dremel, and I'll show you how that works, but you can already tell it's starting to polish out those scratches. I'm going to take a paper towel and some isopropyl alcohol. You don't want to use anything stronger than, than IPA. I'm going to wipe off what I got and check what to see what the canopy looks like. Now that actually doesn't look too bad so far. And if you were to dip this in uh, Future, you, it, would, uh, it would really brighten it up. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change out my polishing wheel and I'm going to put on something a little softer. And now what I'm going to use is this uh, polishing compound. And, and you can tell it's different because it's white. It's a little less coarse. I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the rubbing compound with the polishing compound. Now what I've got, we'll go ahead and move the move this over. Now what I'm going to use is some of this uh, Maguire's Plastix plastic polish, and I put a little bit on my finger, and this is really runny. It's kind of like car wax. Put this on here. And I'm going to switch out and get a different polishing pad. All right. We'll go ahead and we'll clean this off. Again, I'm doing this really quickly just to show you how quick you can get a decent result. And the more time you spend on it, the, the, uh, the better it's going to look. But just showing you what about 10 minutes worth of polishing and sanding will do to get rid of that seam does wonders. So here we go. That doesn't actually look too bad. So that's about 10 minutes worth of work. And I will probably, this is the one I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use the 10 and one. I, I, I can still see somewhat of a ridge in here. So I'm gonna probably redo this one, sand it, and then uh, do the polishing regimen again. But uh, that's all there is to it, fellas. I get a lot of people asking me to show how I paint my cockpits. And it's really, it's, it's really not complicated. So I hardly ever put it in there. But uh, I'll show you a, a couple little tricks that I've used in how, in how I paint my cockpits. Now, I sprayed down the gray and then I came back with some black. And I, for hand painting, I like to use Vallejo model color. And then I'll thin it down with their uh, thinner. And then uh, when I'm hand brushing, I'll usually add a little bit of retarder medium. I think I've shown this on another video. Uh, and, and just, I, I do it by eye and by feel. Um, I want it not too thin that it's a wash, but uh, thin enough that it will flow a little bit, but not get everywhere. Uh, if you put it on too thick, it, it globs up and, and get, gets marks. As you can see, I've painted the black on there and there are no brush marks or anything. So I had it thinned down pretty pretty well. I did have to go along and touch up some of the areas that I, I went over the lines, but uh, that you know that's gonna happen when you're painting something this tiny. Now I'm not used to typically painting 148 scale stuff. I, I normally do bigger stuff, so it's a little bit different. Now for the buttons, Oh, and then I came back and I dry brushed it a little bit just to tone down the black. And to be quite honest with you, 
uh, inside the cockpit, I'm going to have a closed canopy because it is going to be in flight. I'm going to have a pilot in there, so I'm not going to see a whole lot of this. So a lot of this work is for naught. I could probably leave it like this and nobody would really know the difference. But I'll show you how I do this. So for the uh, buttons and knobs, what I like to do is I like to use a light gray color. In this case, I just got some light gold gray. Actually, let's use some... Let's use some... Uh, some of this stuff. This is a uh, light gray by Vallejo Air, and it's it's an off white. It's like a grayish, a really light gray. And this Vallejo Air is a little bit thinner than the regular model color, I like this black. This black comes out a lot thicker. Um, the Vallejo Airs thin down a lot more, and the the actual paint seems to settle at the bottom. So you got to shake it up, otherwise you get a real uh, thin mess when you pour it out. So. Let's see, let's go ahead and throw some of this down. And one thing I don't like about this, and I don't airbrush this Vallejo stuff very often just because I just, it, I don't like it. Um, but for hand brushing, I, it's it's probably the, it's a lot better than Tamiya. Tamiya is really hard to hand brush. So it's kind of rubbery when it dries. It's one of the reasons I don't like it for like a, like a regular paint finish. I really don't like to use it for airbrushing and it does clog up my airbrush so I'll throw a little bit on there and what I like to do is I'll take a toothpick and I've got these long toothpicks that I got at Walmart extra long l'elegance uh, uh, l'elegance toothpicks that's French I took French in high school and a little bit in college so as you parle français in peu that's about all I know I speak a little French okay so then I'll just sharpen up my toothpick with my exacto blade I'll come in here and I'll get a little bit on here and then I'll go button by button. And I'm just gonna put a dot on there. So instead of using a brush for this, I find it's best just to use a toothpick. Just get in here and go dot by dot. And if you make a mistake, you can always come back with some black and touch up. But again, since this is going to be a closed canopy, it's uh, not going to be that noticeable, if we're being honest with each other. You can see, I, I, when you get a little bit too much on there, you got to get the right amount on there. If you get too much, it globs on and kind of makes a little bit of a mess. So we can touch whatever we mess up, we can always t go back and touch up. And then, so what I'll do is I'll paint all the buttons with this color and then I'll come back with sometimes if it's a, if it's gonna be uh, really visible, I'll come back with some different grays and then I'll come back with some reds and paint some, some buttons red based on, you know, reference pictures. Sometimes I just kind of wing it and paint what looks right but most of the buttons I paint with this white light color or this light gray color just like so all right so that's how that's done I'll show you a couple pictures of it once I get it done But one of the, uh, the more prominent issues that I found with this kit is the overcomplicated way that they've built the intakes. Now they've got a two piece shell that goes around the actual intake here, and then a third piece right along the top, and then a fourth piece that goes right here. Now there are gonna be some issues because they don't align as well because there's just a lot of moving parts. Anytime you have four different parts, uh, interacting with each other you're gonna have some issues so I've got a seam line right along here that I'm gonna have to take care of scrape even that out with my exacto blade and right along the side here where this top piece, top piece meets and then you also you also have a seam line right along the center line and I'm gonna have to sand this and obliterate uh, this piece, this uh, little detail right here, and then this detail right here. So before I start sanding this away, 
I went ahead and I've grabbed some of my templates. Now, I'm not going to rescribe this in probably until I get um, the get it in primer. But what I want to do is I want to find the closest match that I can, which is this one. And I marked it off of my template. And then the closest circular match right here. And I went ahead and marked that off. So now I'm going to put these aside. So do when I do prime it and I do want to come back and rescribe those in. I've already got those marked. I know which ones I need to use. And it's also best to take a picture of, of what the detail looks like. Because I'm going to have to do some, do some uh, rivet holes and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and sand this down. Get this all flush. I'll probably have to use some of some filler to clean that up and make that look all nice and neat. And then again, once I prime it, then I can go ahead and rescribe my lines. All right, fellas. So I am uh, dealing with the ordinance right now. Typically, what I like to do is I because I ship a lot of my models, and I will be posting this on eBay when it's finished and selling it. So I will be shipping this. And what I typically like to do is magnetize the ordinance so that uh, I can remove them. It's a lot easier to ship a model if you don't have the ordnance glued on because those are going to be the first things that break off. Um, now, this kit is interesting and then they've got some uh, their own little method for attaching some of these ordnance without having to glue the ordnance on. Like the uh, the wing pie or the wing uh, fuel tanks, they've got, I've got little poly caps in here and they fit in here just like so. So there's no need to magnetize these. These fit on here nice and snug. Uh, the center pylon is the same way. Ugh. Now I did glue the pylons on, which is which is going to be fine. Um, but uh, the, the center pylon has the same thing. It's got this little rod that fits into a poly cap on this little doohickey here, and it fits in there just like so. Uh, the missiles, I've got these larger missiles. I forgot what they were, but these right here fit on on these pylons like so, if I can get this off. There's a little uh, clip that just fits snugly inside the pylon. And I will have to glue this piece right here onto this missile, but that's not gonna be that big of a deal. And then once that's glued on, then I can just put it on like so. Now, the, the kit will have you have to glue the uh, missiles I think I've got a Sidewinder missile here and a, I think this is a Sparrow, I'm not sure. Um, but the Sparrows are going to go on the end of the wings here and then the Sidewinders will go on here. But they would have you glue these on. So there's no way that they have these uh, that are removable. So what I'm going to have to do is magnetize the Sidewinders to the pylons, which I've already done this one and the sparrows onto the outer wing, which I've already magnetized these. You can see there. And then there's a magnet right there. So these will just be able to be attached just like so. Now I've shown in previous videos how I magnetize missiles, but it has somewhat evolved over time. And I, you can see I've only got one magnet, one here and then the other magnet here. And uh, I'll just run through this real quick on how I do this. See there, one magnet, one magnet. And there's not a lot of room to work with on these 148 scale ordnance, especially with the Sidewinder missiles. So I'm using the smallest magnets that I have, and I think these are one millimeter by two millimeter, if I'm not mistaken. But they're real tiny. And I've got two separate uh, battery of magnets here. Uh, one, oh. Jeez, I don't want to get them mixed up. So I've got the ends marked, uh, the, the polarities marked so that they go together just like so. So I don't have to mess with that, figuring out which is which. Because if you get the polarities mixed up, it it, uh, it causes a big problem when you glue them down and they're, uh, they're, the polarities are, are not matched up. So what I'm going to do first is... I'm finding a point on the actual pylon that I'm going to glue down to the plane. I'm finding a point where I'm going to put the magnet. And this is going to be the same point that I used on this other one here. If I can find it. I can get all this crap out of the way. 
So basically what I'm doing to find my point is I'm just using a piece of tape and using this little, um, this little notch here as a reference point to where I'm going to put my first magnet in. And I'm gonna take a small drill bit and go right at the edge. And I know where the center line is because I can still somewhat see where that seam is where I glued the two halves together. And I'm just gonna drill a starter hole, just like so, to mark my location. Now I've got a bigger drill bit, and this is where it gets kind of tricky with such with these 148 scale planes because <laughs> you don't have a lot of room to work with. I mean, my uh, my drill bit's almost as wide as the the part. So now, uh, and and this is a drill bit that's that I know fits this magnet. So this hole will make a big enough hole, just big enough to fit these, these round magnets here. So now I'm gonna just take my big drill bit, stick it in my starter hole, and I'm gonna go slow and just drill that hole. Like so. Now I'll take my X-Acto blade and clean it up just a bit. All right, I'm gonna take one of my magnet uh, batteries, I'm gonna call it a battery, my magnet set of magnets here, and I've got the black marked on the end, so that's facing up. I'm gonna dip it in some fairly thick, slow drying CA glue, and then get a little bit on there. And I'm just gonna get it in there where it catches. There we go. I can set that aside and I will take a non-magnetic flat piece and just make it flush, okay? And then I can come in here with some CA accelerator, some kicker, put it on there. All right, so now we're good to go on that. Next, what I'll do is I'm gonna take my sidewinder and I'm gonna get a little bit of red paint I'm gonna put a little dot right in the center of that magnet. Okay. And then I'm going to take my sidewinder. I'm gonna line these notches where they're gonna go. Notch here, notch there, and I'm gonna press down. And then that's gonna mark the center location of where my, I need to drill. All right, set that aside. Now I can come in here and it gets kind of tricky because, again, there's not a lot of room to work with here. Uh, I'm going to try to align it to where it's perpendicular with my notches. And I'm going to drill my starter hole. And it's good to go slow. Just like so. All right. I'm going to take my bigger drill bit, and you can see this is almost as wide as this missile. So uh, if you're concerned about the missile looking a little wonky in this area, then this might not be the method for you. Because, I mean, you, you won't be able to tell. It, it, it'll be hard to tell that the magnet's there unless you look close, because it is going to be on the inside next to the pylon. But it does somewhat change. Uh, I mean, it it's it, there's obviously a magnet there but it's it's hard to tell when it's on the plane all right Let's see there so i'm drilling about halfway through just like that and i'm going to take my other set of magnets and the brown side's going to be up so the polarities are matched up i don't know why i'm trying to dip it in the paint dip it in the super glue all right Stick it in there just like so, and we'll use some kicker. All right, let that set up a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and scrape the paint off of here. All right, now this should, 
give this just enough grip with the two magnets that it will stay on this pylon. Just like so. Perfect. All right. Now, now I can glue this pylon onto this little part here. And now I can detach and attach my missiles for shipping. Simple as that. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this video up and you can see I've got my pylons glued on here. Everything is nice and sturdy with the magnets on these missiles and they come off just like so. Got my Sidewinder pylons glued on and they come off easy peasy. Perfect. Now, when I when I mentioned earlier when I was painting all the knobs and switches in the in the cockpit, uh, I've got everything in here, and as you can tell, you can't see anything. And then once I throw the canopy on, you're going to see even less. So <laughs> unless you get in there with a scope, you might be able to see something. I don't know. But anyway, on the next episode, we'll uh, I'll show you how I put the tube in uh, to uh, insert the acrylic rod and get it set up on the display base. We'll get uh, everything else straightened out on this thing, get the canopy down, and then uh, we'll start painting. So catch you on the next episode. Thanks for watching, fellas.